everyone, and happy World Turtle Day! My name is Jenna, and I'm the Program Assistant with the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, or NPCA for short. Here at the NPCA, our job is to protect all of the lands, water, including the people, plants, and animals that call the Niagara region home. In partnership with the 2021 Canada Summer Games, we're here today to talk about everything about turtles. Today we're going to learn more about turtles, we're going to see some of their habitats on our properties, and we're going to learn why they call some of our conservation areas home. At the end, we'll even have a craft that you and your families can do at home. Are you ready? Come join us as we get ready to explore the great outdoors. Welcome to Balls Falls Conservation Area. is an area of geologic, ecologic, and cultural significance. It's situated atop the Niagara Escarpment within the town of Lincoln. The park itself is divided in half by the 20 Mile Creek. The creek actually begins out in the city of Hamilton and flows for hundreds of kilometers before making its way through Balls Falls and eventually it leads out to Jordan Harbor and into Lake Ontario. It's because of this creek behind me that we get one part of our name. That's because here at Balls Falls, we have not only one, but two waterfalls on our property. First are the Upper Falls, the smaller of the two with a height of 35 feet. They are considered a Bridal Veil Falls as they are wider than they are tall. This waterfall is also the location of the output of an underground river that runs parallel to the 20 Mile Creek. It can be seen to the left of the falls. Next are the Lower Falls, often referred to as Niagara's Other Falls. They are much taller than the Upper Falls, with a height of 90 feet. A magnificent sight to behold all year round, and especially on days like today when you can see rainbows down in the gorge. The other half of our name comes from the Ball family. The Ball family were the first European settlers on this land from the early 1800s. In 1807, the brothers George and John Ball purchased the land where Balls Falls stands currently. Quickly after purchasing the land, they erected a log cabin, just like the one you see here, as the first family settlement. George and John were keen entrepreneurs, and in 1809, they constructed the grist mill. This mill provided grain and flour to the troops during the War of 1812. Along with the grist mill, the Ball family also created a sawmill and a woolen mill and eventually created the village of Glen Elgin. The village was thriving in the 1850s, but alas, by the late 1800s, it fell into decline. The Ball family continued to live on the property until they sold it to the NPCA in the 1960s. Our park is also part of the Carolinian forest ecosystem. This ecosystem has the greatest biodiversity of any other ecosystem in Canada. This means that we have the most number of plants and animals compared to anywhere else in the country. Turtles are one of the many species that call this ecosystem home. Let's go head up to our dugout pond to learn a little bit more about them. Welcome to the dugout pond at the Balls Falls Arboretum. This is a man-made pond that was created for the sole purpose of providing additional habitat for the animals that live around here. Now, this place here is an excellent place for turtles to live. Turtles are part of the reptile family, and actually there's currently eight species of turtles that are found in Ontario today. The common snapping turtle is the largest freshwater turtle in Canada, with some turtles reaching up to 47 centimeters in length. These turtles are listed as special concern by sorrow or the species at risk in Ontario. Blanding's turtle is listed as threatened and is often referred to as the happy turtle because it looks like it's always smiling. The northern map turtle is listed as special concern and was named because of the special pattern on its shell that looks like lines on a topographical map. The eastern musk turtle is also listed as special concern and is oftentimes called the stink pot turtle as a result of the musky odor it emits when it's threatened. The Midland painted turtle is one of the most common turtles found in Ontario. It features red and orange markings on the edge of its shell, which are unique among any other turtle. 
The spiny soft-shell turtle is the only soft-shell turtle of its kind in Ontario. It's also listed as endangered. The spotted turtle is also listed as endangered and is known for its bright yellow spots on its shell. The wood turtle is the only species of turtle not found in Niagara. This turtle is listed as endangered as, unfortunately, many people tend to take them out of their natural habitat and raise them as pets. The dugout pond is the perfect habitat for turtles because it contains the three things turtles need for survival. Food, water, and shelter. Our current turtle resident at the pond is a common snapping turtle. This is her here. I'll call her Ethel. Snapping turtles like Ethel are omnivores, meaning that they eat both plants and animals. For Ethel, a tasty snack on a day like today could be a delicious frog or toad. On other days, she could crave some leafy greens. Our pond has lots of lovely plants scattered around that are perfect for Ethel to eat. For Ethel's water needs, this pond has it covered. There is lots of water here for Ethel to swim in and drink, even enough to share with other species in the ecosystem. This water is also incredibly slow moving, which is how turtles like it. They can't have water too fast or else they won't be able to swim. The last thing turtles like Ethel need for survival is shelter. Our dugout pond here is surrounded by dense vegetation. This allows for her to have places to hide as well as lay her eggs in the springtime. Our pond is also set far back from any roads, so there's less of a risk for her to get hit by any cars. The only contact that Ethel will have at our pond is the occasional hiker like myself who stands out on the dock and takes in the view. In addition to our pond, there's lots of water at Balls Falls, though not all of it is quite that suitable for turtles. Much of the 20 mile creek at Balls Falls is incredibly fast flowing, particularly during the springtime. And like I said at the pond, the reason why Ethel the turtle loved that space so much is that the water was nice and slow. In water speeds like this, a turtle wouldn't be able to survive. So instead, look for shallow pools along the sides. So next time you visit a conservation area, here's some things you can look for if you're trying to find a habitat that's perfect for a turtle. As you're hiking, take a look for well-protected areas. Forests along the side of a pond or creek offer great protection for turtles. Then try and find places with slow moving water that could also have food sources like plants and animals that are perfect for turtles. Once you've found that, be on the lookout for rocks or logs that are out in the sunshine. Turtles are part of the reptile family, which means that they are ectotherms or cold-blooded. This means that just like other reptiles such as snakes, turtles are incapable of generating their own body heat. Humans like you and I, we're warm-blooded, so we generate our own heat from within. But for our reptile friends like snakes and turtles, they require the heat from the sun in order to stay warm. That's why on sunny days, you'll often find reptiles on things like leaves, rocks, or logs, as those hold a lot of heat and can transfer it over to them. Remember Ethel? I found her sunning in a nice pile of leaves, getting herself warm for the day. Now that we know a lot more about turtles and their habitats, let's head on over to Binbrook Conservation Area to learn more about it and the turtles that live there. Welcome to Binbrook Conservation Area. This is one of the biggest conservation areas in the Niagara Peninsula watershed with over 960 acres or 372 hectares of property that serves as home and habitat to a wide variety of different species and migratory visitors as well. 
The area is set within the city of Hamilton, but actually serves as the headwaters for the Welland River, which makes its way through the Niagara region and eventually empties out into the Niagara River. The majority of this area is made up by Lake Nyapenko Reservoir behind me. This reservoir is actually a man-made lake created by the NPCA, which acquired properties along an existing creek bed which feeds the Welland River. In the 1970s, the creek bed was expanded, a dam was created, and the whole area was flooded to create a reservoir. The creation of this water body, the largest inland lake in the Niagara Peninsula, also served as the creation of extended habitat for aquatic plants, mammals, and birds. The lake is home to fish species like pumpkin seed, bass, pike, walleye, black and white crappie, and the invasive Asian carp. It also serves as a popular destination for migratory waterfowl, such as black ducks, teals, golden eyes, and bufflehead ducks. Lake Nyapenko is the perfect nesting site for waterfowl like Canada geese, mallard ducks, and wood ducks. While Canada geese and mallard ducks make their nests along the shore amongst the reeds and aquatic plants, wood ducks prefer to nest in cavities or hollow trees above the water along shore. The conditions are ideal here at Binbrook Conservation Area. Volunteer organizations such as the Glanbrook Conservation Committee have created nesting boxes for wood ducks and raised mallard duck nesting tubes along marshy areas of the lake, which has led to many successful hatches and ducklings. Thanks to groups and hardworking volunteers like the GCC, our conservation areas sustain vital habitat and species, and we are so thankful for their contributions. We stopped by Binbrook today to determine why this place is such an important spot for turtle habitats. Now, at Balls Falls, we learned that turtles are cold-blooded, which means they require the warmth of the sun to survive but we also know that they need aquatic habitats. So come with us as we try and find some turtles at Binbrook Conservation Area. Our first stop is right down to the beach. Shallow lakes with soft mud bottoms and suspended substrate like Lake Nyapenko are perfect place for turtles. This lake is a large water body, but is relatively shallow, especially along the shoreline. The deepest part of the lake is right in front of the dam and where most recreational activities take place like swimming. Because this was a human-created lake established from flooded farmland and a creek bed, the lake bottom is very muddy and silty, making it a good spot for turtles to hibernate in the winter. Like we learned at Balls Falls, turtles prefer still or slow-moving bodies of water. That is why we're not likely to find them along swift-moving rivers or creeks. Just like the turtle moves slow on land, they like water that moves slow as well. This means that a shallow lake like Lake Nyapenko is a perfect habitat for turtles. Another reason why shallow lakes are ideal for turtles is because unlike some small ponds, lakes like this one do not freeze solid down to the lake bottom during the winter. Down below, the lake bed remains unfrozen and the muddy bottom scattered with debris and plant material is the perfect warm, cozy place for turtles to bury down into and hibernate over the winter months. Many species of turtles thrive in these type of conditions, but the most common types of turtles we see in the neighborhood of a lake like this one include the common snapping turtle who loves slow waters and lots of soft mud and plants, the at-risk blandings turtle, the map turtle, stink pot or musk turtle, and the painted turtle. Conservation efforts have been taking place in and around this lake for many years, and thanks to partners, aquatic plantings and habitat creation along the shoreline have created perfect places for turtles and other species to make their homes. What makes this lake equally special is that because it is part of a conservation area, only certain human activities are permitted. For example, no motorized boats are permitted on this lake. Only canoes, kayak, and rowboats can paddle these waters, thus reducing the risk of pollution or damage to lake and turtle habitat. Limiting human activity on lakes such as this helps to preserve conservation efforts like habitat construction and newly planted aquatic vegetation. Protecting turtle habitats is very important. Across our province, many of these places have been destroyed by humans for development or have been accidentally polluted by some of our activities. That is why places like conservation areas and parks, like Balls Falls and Binbrook, are important places that provide supportive habitat and resources for turtles to survive and thrive. So the next time you visit a special place like Balls Falls or Binbrook Conservation Area, remember why these places are important and worth preserving and conserving. They provide valuable and ideal aquatic habitat for many different and diverse species, but especially to Ontario's turtles. These turtles are at risk of becoming endangered or extirpated because so much of their habitat has been lost. We have the important job now to make sure that natural places and waters are saved so turtles like my friend Ethel here can survive. 
Now let's head back to the Arboretum at Balls Falls to see how you can take your knowledge and love of turtles and turn it into a fun at-home activity. So a really fun way of bringing the joy and the cuteness of turtles into your own home is through a really fun craft that you can do with your entire family. So first thing you need to do is print off our lovely instructables for Make Your Own Turtle. The first page is all the instructions that you'll need. And the second page is our template with some of the extra things that you're gonna to need to color in as well. So for this craft, you're gonna need a few materials that you should easily have at home. First thing, some egg cartons. You're also gonna need some glue, something to color with, be it pastels, paint, markers, crayons, whatever you have on hand, and some scissors. So first thing that you want to do is you want to cut out one of the sections of your egg carton cups. So you always want to make sure when you cut out your egg carton cup that it's nice and flat along the bottom. That way your turtle is level and it's easier for its head and legs to stick on to. Next thing you're going to want to do is to color in the shell of your turtle. Once your shell is all colored in, the next step that you're going to want to do is to color in the head, the legs, and the tail of your turtle on the template that's here. You can be as creative as you want when coloring in your turtle. Though, if you did want to make your turtle a little bit more realistic, we've included some real turtle painting tips, including some of the colors and where you find them on the turtles found in Ontario. Our next step is going to be to cut out the individual pieces of our turtle. Now make sure you cut out this entire shape. Don't cut off our little glue tabs. Those are really important for a step coming up. Now it's time to glue the parts of our turtle all together. Now your little turtle is all set and ready for an adventure. How might a turtle of your own might go on an adventure, you ask? Well, that's when you play a nice game of Roads and Rivers. This is a board game that you can print off and play at home. If everyone in your family makes a turtle piece, those are your players for the game. And that wraps up all of our time for today. Let's see, tell me one thing we learned about today. That's right! We learned all about turtles, we learned what they need in their habitats, we saw how we can have some interesting habitats in our conservation areas, and we've learned what we can do to help protect our turtles at home. Thank you so much for tuning in today, folks. Be sure to share this video so that we can spread the message about how important it is to protect the turtles in our local ecosystems. This is Jenna at the NPCA, signing off. Stay safe, everyone.